What's up everybody? So today's video is gonna be one of your favorites. This was actually, if you do remember this video, this is the A12X25 fan that we made or we cloned, I guess. Back when I made that video, I seen a few comments of people going, you should try to make a DaVinci Airscrew uh, into a fan. And I was like, hmm, I like that. And it kind of just stuck with me. And I think that today we are going to try it. Do, well, do I think it's gonna work? Well, it didn't really make a good helicopter, did it? So a good fan is, it's not looking good, but it's gonna be fun to try it. So let's let's get in there and see if we can design one up and then we'll print one out and see if it does anything cooling wise. We'll just see if it moves air. That's goal one, does DaVinci Airscrew move air? If it does, then we'll try to cool something. And the goal of this video is one, to print one out and two, well, I guess there's three things. There's two is to move air. And then if it does, we're gonna try to cool 120 AIO better than if it didn't have any fan. So, off we go. So first thing um, we should discuss is what is a DaVinci Airscrew? If you're like, what is this? What's this clown talking about? Well, this is what it is. So right here, uh, Leonardo da Vinci was uh, one of those guys back in the day that came up with some pretty crazy stuff. And one of those things was this little flying hel helical screw dealio, I don't. I've never really done too much research in studio. I don't know if it ever flew, if it was just a concept, but either way, the idea was that you'd have a screw type airfoil on top of an area where a guy would, or a few guys, I guess, where a few guys would push to wind up a set of like, well, they're not rubber bands, but imagine some sort of way to store energy. And then when they let it go, this bad boy would spin and I assume you would just fly into space because there's really no way to, co to control it. But the idea here is, does this even move air is what we're gonna do. And there's a lot of different, um, I mean, they all look the same pretty much. Normally like one wrap of the airfoil. I think we'll go a little bit bigger than that. But anyway, we have a good starting point. We have the A12X25 clone that we made. So we know this fits over our fan hub. So we are going to one, take away Everything we need except for the hub here. So let's first, it's been a while since we made this bad boy. So let's see, this is essentially what we're, we, we need here. The inside of that is 37.83, we'll leave that be. We probably don't need it to be that thick. We're gonna kind of cheat here. Normally you would just start all over, uh, which we could, but since I cut everything away to just print this hub back when I was testing the fan. We can literally just start here and it will be a sloppy model, but nonetheless, it will do the job. So one, let's, we don't need this to be so, so thick. Essentially this, because it's gonna be so tall, we want this to be as thin and as light as possible because balancing this is going to be uh, difficult, would be a good word, impossible maybe, I don't know. So let's just, let's just go two, two millimeters on the thickness and start from there. Okay, so now we have a little thinner hub. I think the inside here, this, this is two millimeters as well. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, two millimeters, two millimeters, and the right size. So, this is how we're going to do this. One, we need to add an axis. So there is an axis for the center of this hub, and we're gonna sketch around that axis and resolve it around the model because essentially we're gonna need to make kind of a drill. We're gonna need to make a big giant air drill, patent pending. <laughs> so we're starting with the hub. Come on mouse, there we go. And we'll do something like this. So from here out and down. There's a good starting point, how tall do we want this? So from the bottom of the fan disc, if I can said click on it, there we go. To the top of the point, 81, let's, let's do 80 millimeters. This is not going to be a fan that fits in pretty much any situation, but if it works, you can always tune it after the fact. We want the top to be one millimeter because this will give us two millimeters flat spot and then this can just be whatever angle it wants to be. And this will have to wrong a button. There we go. So now we have a fully defined sketch. We're essentially gonna make a cone out of this. And now we have a point, a pointy point. 
So now we need to make the screw part. So what we'll do is we'll make a reference axis from the top here. Uh, we'll have it start two millimeters in. Alrighty, and then we're going to need to make a circle. So sketch on that plane we created, convert entities, and we're gonna basically have an intersecting circle where that plane and this cone are. And there you go, right there. That's where, that's where we are going to start our air screw. Now, to do so, we are going to do insert curves. Yeah, here we go, helical spiral. So we're gonna start at that circle. It's gonna need to be a tapered helix, 17.54, if that is correct. And you can see that it's a little bigger. That's fine, we can make do. That means my angle is not perfect, but it's in the ballpark. Good, we have our helix, and now we need to draw our airfoil. So let's find a plane that works. I think that one, yeah. So that's the plane we're gonna start on. So this is where we're gonna draw our airfoil. Perfect. So now what we need to do to make this deal go around the ball of the helix here is we just need to select this sketch and the path is going to be the helix. And there you go, look, it just kind of spins around there. So now we'll just hit okay, we'll see how that looks. Well, one, we have a problem so far is that we, we are not connecting. So we need this to be all intersecting our model. So what we can do is we'll have to go do some editing here. That's just on the 110 diameter, so that should fit within that, no problems. Now the question is, do we want to have that many, do we want to, do we want to crank that many 90s? <laughs> it looks so goofy, but I think it might work. So now we just need to clear out the center point. Let's make it look a little less blocky here. So this leading edge here, let's take it down. 0.75. There we go, round it around the front. And then we'll do something here. So it's not such a hard edge. There. Uh, it's got a little bit more twist than a normal uh, Da Vinci air screw, but I think that's awesome. So we could just make it two or three like the regular one, but. Uh, I say nay. I say we try this and see what it does. If, you're, um, if you have any more ideas for other goofy things you want to see, make sure to always leave me a comment down below. If you're not subscribed and you just stumbled on this video, this is your time. It's time to subscribe. Give me your, all your ideas and we'll print them out, make them work. You don't even have to have a printable idea. If you just got an idea, just let me know. We'll make it happen if it's, if it's something that just sticks with me like this. So. Let's get this over in the slicer, slice it up, and see if we can get my printer to actually make this. Success. So, uh, this actually wasn't the first print. First one, didn't really like how it turned out. Changed the orientation, and it came out pretty good. So I took, a I took some of your advice. Uh, I did the thing nobody likes to do, and that's maintenance. I took my printer basically apart, made sure all the belts were tight, lubed up the ball screw, uh, cleaned everything up and made sure to level the bed before prints because the bed I have on that TiVo is not, not too good at staying exactly level every time, but I've had much more success when I, you know, treat the machine a little better, but this actually came out not too shabby. Now, question is, is how is it gonna spin because this is not gonna be balanced. It's not gonna be even something I can balance because it won't fit on my prop balancer and I don't really have a good way to balance it, so we're just gonna have to go Go YOLO here, so let's see if she fits on said fan and we'll see how it spins and see if step one is accomplished, which is move air. Was that step one? This was. This is the next day, if you haven't guessed. Uh, took a minute to print this, and then since I pr printed it twice, it took twice as long. This thing fits like a glove. <laughs> Look how goofy that looks, this is hilarious. It's like, are we gonna drill for oil? Or are we gonna, are we gonna try to cool a fan? But anyway, uh, clearance wise, things worked out pretty nicely. Print. I don't see any wobble. Printer did a good old job. I mean, I see a little wobble. Let me let me not lie to you. I actually have been considering getting a new printer. Uh, I know I, I asked you guys what I should get for a secondary printer, which will become a new primary printer for $500 or less, but that's, as many of you told me, not really a reasonable price point if you're looking for a reliable high-end or, or more high-end printer. So 
think of the thousand dollars i've been looking at the the persia purse persia i believe um obviously it's like the gold standard but for what i got halfway decent so what do you think you think that's gonna move any air you think it's gonna just jump across the table when i plug it in only one way to find out so let's plug it in see if it blows or does anything and then we'll see if we can hold it down i always wonder what it's like for somebody that's like this is the first video of mine that they're seeing and like what is this dude doing well i'm making weird stuff and putting it on the internet because it's hilarious but this is a good idea that one of you guys had like if i haven't if i didn't say that and i'm also working on another one that somebody just popped up in the comments and i was like i like where your head's at um still in the design phase uh think nuclear power plant you know those big old stacks you see something around that line so make sure to get subscribed if you want to see that doohickey that'll be fun hopefully it works out as planned but anyway let's see if this doodad works we'll just plug it in and see if it spins slight vibration just, just a slight oh my god that is atrocious just, just look at this I mean, it's moving a little bit of air, but it's so much vibration that we're losing so much energy. But it's like one of those, oh, dude, I can't remember. What were those toys called? You, like there's like a ball with spikes on it and you put it down and just like rolled across the floor. It's essentially what we have created here. Is it a cooling fan? Maybe not, but it's very interesting. Uh, let, me, let me see if I can do anything about this. I don't, I don't foresee me being able to, but stand by. Ooh, a horrible tragedy befallen our air screw so um it's kind of a lost cause so what i noticed i pulled up the model checked the cg it's kind of like here it's not really that far off center line the real problem is, is if you spin it real slowly you notice that the tip kind of shoots off uh, my printer kind of let me down on that one but uh it is what it is so we're going to run it as is so we're going to do a couple of tests here first i ran i have the pf 120 from silverstone i believe hooked up i ran it without a fan and obviously we throttled and then I ran it with the A12X25, one that's not like this, a real one. And we got a temperature about 81.3 as our average, so we're not going to beat that, obviously. The goal here is to try to not thermal throttle. And then as a little side, a little side challenge, we're going to, obviously I'm going to run this for 45 minutes like I did the other test. And if this knock to a motor survives the onslaught of that vibration for 45 minutes, I think we can declare this is a pretty solid fan and if it does survive the next idea here is we're gonna just gonna cut it right about there so we have like a more traditional looking aerial screw where there's just like two twists and then hopefully knocking that tip off will help balance things a little better and then we'll see if we can get some more performance out of it but let's see what happens when you run it with crazy amounts of vibration So that didn't, that didn't take very, okay, one second. So like expected, we're throttling. So now, let's cut her down a little bit. So that's probably not the proper way to use scissors, but it's shorter now, so let's see what happens. I mean, we still got some vibration, but it's done. It's definitely, we took it down a notch. Let's run the test. Problems. So we're throttling it again. So what is one to do? Now it's essentially just one big fan blade with a tiny gap. Let's do a little sandy check. We're spinning the right direction, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we are. Wouldn't that be embarrassing? Ugh, nope. Ah, there's just nothing. Well, I mean, we could be like, oh, it doesn't work. But I don't like that. Let's, let me make a modification. We'll, we'll make it, We'll make it more aggressive, just like, a, you know, we'll, we'll do a full 360, higher pitch. I want to see some sort of 
progress and I want this design to work somehow. So let me print that out and uh, I'll be back with you. So here we go. This is, this is literally best case scenario uh, for this idea. So now it's just one sweep. There's no, I took away any conical shape to it. It's just a, a cylinder, same diameter all the way across. And we have a, a steeper angle, a steeple, a steeper pitch or helix. And we're gonna see how it works. Um, I don't think it's gonna be better, but who knows? Let's plug it in here. Jesus! I mean, it, it, compared to last time, I feel I feel some air movement. So we might be onto something. It's definitely, we're, we're testing the, the bearings of this A12X25. So release. It's very lively. Okay, let's get it hooked up. See if we can uh, not thermal throttle. I will say though, it, it is the vibration while also, well, still horrendous is not as bad. I mean, it's not as loud, I guess. We are not throttling yet, but keep in mind, I just turned this on. So the loop is cool. We're gonna have to let it run for uh, a bit of time to see if it can keep it stabilized, but I'll be back with you. Hopefully later than sooner, but who knows? No thermal throttling. So I'm, uh, I'm quite happy that we stuck it out and decided to make this final, final edition of this one blade uh, Da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci, aerial screw deal because it I mean it works now if you look closely though at the fan so if you look at it in slow motion you're going to notice that the the top and the bottom they're they're not concentric I mean there is still a slight warp and even though I've taken my printer apart made sure all the belts are tight lubed up everything checked all the wheels and everything this it's still in the end a $200 printer that it's just not perfect and if I'm I mean if I slowed it down and tried a bunch of other stuff I could probably get it to print but it would take a long time but either way I think we've proven that this idea is although goofy and uh, impractical it does work so also this is basically a, a single blade fan for a lot of you guys that are wanting to see something like that now I am going to save this for one reason um, this has been a few days that I've been messing around with this getting to this point let's unplug this bad boy And although the printer that I use, the TiVo Tarantula Pro, is like I said, a $200 printer, it does a good job for a $200 printer. I have no regrets in buying it. It's a little finicky. The worst part is no bed leveling and the uh, the extruder. I get extruder slippage and grinding. That's probably the biggest issue I have is sometimes I just strip the filament when I'm doing a lot of retracts. So I did decide to finally buy a Prusa. So I just ordered it. It's gonna be like five, six weeks before it shows up here as a kit. I'll have to put it back together. But when it does, I'm going to print this exact fan at the same layer height, uh, same orientation as I did on the TiVo. And we're gonna see if we can't get it straightened out. And if we do, do the temperatures improve? Because as of now, this system, when compared to the other uh, fans we ran and other basically no fan and then the normal a12x25 and this one the numbers are pretty good you know this fan does still max out it had a maximum temperature of 100 which is not ideal but you can see that we are not we're not uh we're not maxing out when it comes to averages and we're not throttling so we are working and it now is a question of if printed on a higher quality printer do we get any more gains? So stay tuned for that. When that does show up, I'll put it together. We'll pull this bad boy back out and we'll compare the two and see if it's uh, any better or any difference. If you have any more goofy ideas, uh, make sure to leave a comment down below. And if you stuck around for this long, enjoy a nice slow motion video of this thing hopping around the desk because it's, it's, uh, it's funny. It's quite hilarious. So until next time. <laughs>